Now, for those of you who may not have been in the trucking business or the freight broker business prior to 2012, you might not know that freight brokers were only required to have a surety bond in the amount of $10,000. And then in 2012 came what is called the moving ahead for progress bill. And this bill increased the freight broker surety bond requirement from $10,000 all the way up to $75,000. Now here is how the freight broker surety bond works. The surety bond is for the freight broker's customers, the shipper and the carrier. So if the freight broker happens to do something outside of contract, not aligning with contract with the shipper, the shipper can come back and file a claim against that freight broker surety bond up to $75,000. Same thing for the carrier. If the carrier is not paid or the carrier is not paid on time, he can come back and file a claim against a freight broker surety bond up to $75,000. Now, many would agree that that was a really good first step in weeding out the bad brokers. Because as you already know, in any field, you're gonna have some good and you're gonna have a small fraction of people that are bad out there that try and take advantage of a situation. But now the OIDA, the Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association, says that another step needs to be taken to ensure that not only the FMCSA, but other industry stakeholders can readily identify when a broker's financial security goes under that $75,000 requirement. Now, let me give you the tea on what's currently going on. And what it really boils down to is a transparency issue. What the OOIDA's position is, is that all parties involved, the shipper and the carrier, should be able to see what's going on with the freight broker surety bond, especially when there are claims out there that have been filed against that surety bond. As it currently stands, if a claim is filed against a freight broker surety bond, if you're working with that freight broker as a carrier or a shipper, you don't know that there's been a claim filed until that claim is actually paid. So there could be a legitimate claim, let's say of $20,000, $30,000 against the bond, but you won't know that that claim has actually been filed until the claim is actually paid by the surety bond. And the OOIDA is saying that they need to know that prior to the claim being paid. Because technically speaking, if they are working with that freight broker and he does not have the $75,000 worth of security, then they are putting their business at stake. Now, although I understand where the OOIDA is coming from in respect to small carriers and shippers, as it concerns transparency with the freight broker surety bond, I also wanna to speak to the freight broker side of this equation because illegitimate claims are filed against freight broker surety bond all the time. So what exactly are you saying here? Anytime there's a claim filed, you want there be, to be a registry somewhere that you can go to and know that a claim was filed? Because we also have to understand that surety bond companies have to put in the legwork. They have to do the research first to say whether or not this is a legitimate claim. Once the claim is legitimate, then I agree you should know about it. But to know every time a claim is filed, I think that's going to put in a lot of unnecessary eyes on certain situations. Well, it really doesn't warrant that, right? Because if it's a illegitimate claim, let's say it was a $10,000 illegitimate claim, then it's very likely that that freight broker is not going to be able to work with that shipper or the carrier that is looking at that claim because they are going to get spooked by the idea that there's a claim out there, even though that that claim may not be a legitimate claim. In the coming months, March 29th, 2024, the FMCSA is set to rule on this particular issue. I happen to think that if a freight broker has to report to his customers, shippers or carriers that a claim has been filed against their surety bond, in my opinion, that's government overreach. I also think that it's government overreach if there's a register somewhere where customers can see if a claim has been filed against a broker surety bond. I do think and agree with the OIDA that small carriers need to be protected because we don't want small carriers holding the bag if in fact freight brokers do not have a $75,000 surety bond. In the event that a freight broker surety bond goes underneath that $75,000 requirement, I think that that freight broker should be put out of business immediately. That's what I wanted to share with you today. 
I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you're interested in learning more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a free link in the description box. You can click on that link and register for my five video series. It'll take you into the office with me and you can watch me as I talk to shippers and carriers and give you a better understanding of how this business works before you come into it. And then if you're ready to go out and get your low board, I'm going to leave you a free link in the description box where you can click that link. It'll take you to a page and it give you the option to get a free one month subscription to the best low board in the business. And that's truck stop. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week in the meantime. And until the next time, See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.